This unbalanced redox reaction is fairly unique in that the molecule Cl2 undergoes both oxidation and reduction. And we can see this if we think about the two chlorine atoms involved in Cl2 and their fates in the resulting products. So I'm going to use two different colors for these because we'll see that they end up in two different situations. One of them ends up in Cl minus and the other one ends up as a part of ClO3. So in the starting material, we have an oxidation state of zero for both the blue chlorine and the red chlorine, since this is the elemental form of chlorine. In the products, we've generated Cl minus, which has an oxidation state of negative one. This is a monatomic ion. And in ClO3, we have three oxygens for a total of negative six. The charge on the ion is negative one, and so chlorine here must have an oxidation state of plus five. So the blue chlorine here has undergone oxidation, while the red chlorine has undergone reduction. This type of reaction in which a single species undergoes both oxidation and reduction is known as disproportionation. And this term disproportionation comes up whenever equivalent atoms or groups within a molecule split apart and do different things in the course of a chemical reaction. So here it's the two chlorine atoms undergoing two different processes, oxidation and reduction. And we're going to look in more detail at this reaction as an example of how to balance redox reactions in acidic solution. I've reproduced the unbalanced redox reaction from the last slide over here, and we're going to set out to balance this in acidic solution in the presence of H+, that is. So we sort of identified the half reactions on the last slide by noting that one of the chlorines undergoes oxidation and one undergoes reduction. The reduction half reaction here is the conversion of Cl2 to Cl-, while the oxidation half reaction is the conversion of Cl2 to ClO3-. We then balance each of the half reactions separately for all atoms except hydrogen and oxygen. So in the first case, it's pretty straightforward. We have two chlorines on the reactant side, so we need two chlorines on the product side in the form of two Cl-. In the lower reaction, we have two chlorines on the left-hand side, and so we need two ClO3 anions on the right-hand side. We can then balance for oxygen by adding water. That's not necessary in the top case, so I'm just going to reproduce that half reaction here. No oxygens appear, so we don't need to worry about adding water. In the case of the lower reaction, we have three oxygens in the ClO3- anion, and these come from water. That is, six H2O molecules must be added to the left-hand side to account for the six oxygens that we find in the two ClO3- anions on the right-hand side. Of course, now we've created an issue by introducing new hydrogen atoms, but it's easy enough to balance these out by adding H plus to the product side. So again, no worries on the top reaction. We're completely balanced there except for electrons. In the oxidation half reaction, the reactant side is good. All we have that's extra on the reactant side are these hydrogens, and we can account for those using H plus on the product side. So we have still the two ClO3 minus. We had 12 protons total on the reactants side. That is 12 hydrogens total within H2Os on the reactant side. And so we need to add 12 H plus on the product side to account for that. And now we're fully balanced with the exception of electrons. And to deal with the electrons, we only need to worry about charges. So we're going to look at the total charge on the reactant and product side identify the side with more positive charge and add electrons to that side until the two charges balance. Another way to think about this is that the reduction is occurring here in this first reaction and the oxidation is occurring here. So we should have electrons as a reactant in this reduction step and electrons as a product in this oxidation step. And sure enough, the reactant side is neutral while the product side is negative in this reduction process. And so we need to add two electrons here to account for that so that we have a total charge of negative two on the reactant side, negative two on the product side. In the reaction below, the reactant side is neutral. The product side has an overall charge of plus 10 since we have two negative charges and 12 positive charges. So we need to add 10 electrons to the product side so that that product side comes out to neutral as well. With those half reactions balanced and written here, now all we need to do is make sure that the number of electrons lost in the oxidation is equal to the number of electrons gained in the reduction, and then just add the two half reactions. 
So to do that, we see we have 10 electrons released in the oxidation and two gained in the reduction. So we need to take this reduction half reaction and multiply it by five so that the number of electrons work out. That comes out to 10 electrons plus five Cl2 molecules goes to 10 Cl minus ions. And we can now add everything up to come to a final balanced equation. We have six waters. We have a total of six Cl2 molecules, one from the oxidation and five from the scaled reduction. And on the product side, we have two ClO3 ions, 10 Cl minus ions, and 12 H plus. It's worth noting that all of these coefficients, all of these stoichiometric coefficients are even, and so we can divide them all by two to get to a balanced chemical equation that's sort of the uh, lowest common denominator, if you will, 3H2O plus 3Cl2 goes to ClO3 minus plus 5Cl minus and 6H plus. And here's our final balanced equation. So let's review briefly how we went through this process. The first step was looking at the unbalanced chemical equation, which if we think back to the beginning of this problem was actually quite simple, Cl2 going to ClO3 minus and Cl minus. We then separate this into half reactions. And the weird thing about disproportionations is that because oxidation and reduction are occurring in the same species, the half reactions both involve the same reactant in oxidation and reduction. Here it was Cl2. We then balance the half reactions individually, adding waters to account for oxygen, H plus to account for hydrogens, and then electrons to balance charge overall. We scale the half reactions so that the number of electrons lost in the oxidation is equal to the number of electrons gained in the reduction, add the resulting half reactions, and there's our balanced equation. And here we just divided all the coefficients by two to get to the equation with the smallest whole number coefficients.